1968 was the European tournament that took its first steps into becoming more like its modern editions. The competition also saw Italy become European champions for the first time. It would also see pivotal matches be decided by strange methods, resulting in fundamental changes being made at the international level. But how was this tournament different to the previous editions? How did Italy go on to become champions? What changes did this tournament cause for international football? This is the story of Euro 1968. UEFA's first change was to rename the competition from the European Nations Cup to the European Championship. The second was to revamp the qualification process. Gone was the two-legged knockout tournament. Instead, there would be a group stage at a quarter-final to decide the four final teams. The groups consisted of four teams that played each other home and away. Only the group winner proceeded to the quarter-finals. Italy was drawn with Cyprus, Switzerland and Romania. Nikolai Dobrin gave Romania a shock lead after just seven minutes. But Italy showed its superiority and turned it around before half-time. Inter Milan legend Sandra Mazzola equalised after 30 minutes. Virginio De Paoli gave the lead after 43 minutes. Mazzola struck again after 67 minutes to secure Italy a 3-1 win. In their second game, Italy played Cyprus away in Nicosia. Cyprus put up a good fight as the game remained goalless for 75 minutes. Unfortunately for them, Italy broke the deadlock through Angelo Domenghini in the 76th minute. Giacinto Facchetti made it 2-0 after 88 minutes. Italy faced Romania away in Bucharest next. This proved to be another tough encounter. Romania held on for 80 minutes. But in the 81st minute, Italy once again found a breakthrough. Mario Bertini scored to give Italy a 1-0 win. In their fourth game, they faced Cyprus in Cosenza. This game was nowhere near as competitive as the first. Mazzola opened the floodgates with goals in the 12th and 22nd minutes. Cagliari legend Gigi Riva scored a hat-trick to complete a 5-0 round for Italy. Riva ended his Italy career with 35 goals in 42 games. He remains the top scorer for Italy. Italy faced the Swiss away in Bern next. René Pierre Canton gave Switzerland the lead after 34 minutes. Riva equalised for Italy in the 66th minute. Friedrich Kunzli scored two minutes later to make it 2-1 to the Swiss. Riva once again equalised for Italy in the 85th minute with a penalty. The game finished 2-2. Italy faced the Swiss at home in Cagliari. Italy would make light work of the Swiss this time. Mazzola once again scored an early goal after just three minutes. Riva made it two after just 13 minutes. Domenghini scored two goals in the second half to make it 4-0. Italy finished top of the group with five wins and a draw. A win was worth two points, so they finished with 11 points. They scored 17 goals and conceded just three. The other group winners were defending champions Spain, Bulgaria, the Soviet Union, Yugoslavia, Hungary, France and England. The British qualification process was different from that of the rest of Europe. The participants were not randomly drawn into groups. Instead, the combined results of the 1967 and 1968 British Home Championships were used to determine qualification. Before moving on to the next stage, I would like to thank all of you for your support. The channel now has over 2,100 subscribers. I started this channel in January this year, hoping to hit 100 subs by the end of 2024. So, I am very grateful for the growth in the channel. For those new to the channel, consider hitting like, sharing and subscribing. I have completed my World Cup series and are now going through my Euro series. I post a new video every two weeks. Thank you. Italy was drawn against Bulgaria in the quarterfinals. The first leg was in Sofia. Nikola Kotkov scored for Bulgaria after just 11 minutes with a penalty. Italy pushed for an equaliser, but Bulgaria defended well. Italy did not get an equaliser until the 60th minute, when Dimitar Penev scored an own goal. Dinko Demensiev made it 2-1 for Bulgaria in the 66th minute. Peter Zhekov made it 3-1 after 73 minutes. Shockingly, Bulgaria was 3-1 up. In the 83rd minute, 
Pierino Prati got a second goal for Italy. Bulgaria won the first leg 3-2. The second leg was played in Naples. Prati opened the scoring after just 14 minutes. Dominguini secured a 2-0 win in the 55th minute. Italy won the tie 4-3 and secured their place in the final tournament. Elsewhere, Hungary beat the Soviet Union 2-0 in the first leg, but then lost 3-0 in the second leg. France was thumped 5-1 by Yugoslavia in Belgrade and lost the tie 6-2. Defending World Cup champions England played defending European champions Spain. England won 1-0 in London and 2-1 in Madrid. The final four team tournament was played in Italy between June 5th and 10th. The two semi-finals were one-off matches. If the scores were level, the game would go to extra time. If the game was still level, the result would be decided by a coin toss. The coin toss would not apply in the final. In that scenario, a replay would be played. Italy faced the Soviet Union in the first semi-final in Naples. This was a revenge match for Italy, as the Soviet Union had knocked them out of the 1964 Euros and the 1966 World Cup. Despite this, Italy coach Ferruccio Valeresi claimed they were not unbeatable when questioned over the previous results. Both teams were hit with injuries, as the game proved to be a challenging and physical affair. The Soviets were missing Igor Chislenko and Murtaz Kurtsilava. Italy lost Gianni Rivera, who was forced to go off the pitch for treatment just five minutes into the game after a collision with Valentin Afonin. The game was also played in very poor weather conditions making it even harder for attacking play. Both teams pushed for a goal, but they defended resolutely. The Soviets, at one point, had six corners in a row, but neither team could find a goal in 90 minutes. The game went into extra time, as more tough tackles and injuries followed. Giancarlo Bercellino injured his knee, which forced Domenghini to play left-back. Prati fired a shot just wide, Legendary Italian keeper Dino Zoff produced multiple saves from Albert Shesternev and Alexander Lenev. But still, neither team could score. The game ended goalless. A coin toss decided the Euro 1968 semi-final. Italian captain Giacinto Facchetti said, I went up with the Russian captain. We went down to the dressing rooms together, accompanied by two administrators from the two teams. The referee pulled out an old coin and I called tails. It was the right call, and Italy were through to the semi-final. I went racing upstairs, as the stadium was still full, and about 70,000 fans were waiting to hear the result. My celebrations told them that they could celebrate an Italian victory. This game would become one of the prime examples of why the penalty shootout was developed to break any ties. In the other semi-final, world champions England faced Yugoslavia. The game was played in Florence. It proved to be another tight, physical and cagey affair. Late into the game, it seemed destined to go into extra time goalless, but Dragan Zajic controlled a cross with his chest and fired it in from close range. Yugoslavia won 1-0. England went on to beat the Soviet Union 2-0 in the third place game. Bobby Charlton and Jeff Hurst scored the goals. The final between Italy and Yugoslavia was played in Rome. Gottfried Dienst refereed the game. He also officiated the 1966 World Cup final. Italy was without the injured Rivera and bizarrely decided to rest Mazzola. Keeper Ilya Pantelic split Giorgio Ferrini's long-range shot, but the defence cleared it. Domenghini struck a shot that went just wide. Despite Italy dominating the half, Yugoslavia took the lead six minutes before half-time. Dobrivoje Trivic dribbled down the right wing and crossed to Jaic. His initial touch was poor, but he still got a shot away to score. Five minutes into the second half, Zajic had another shot, but Zoff pulled off a brilliant save. Pietro Anastasi had a chance from a corner, but could not get a shot off. With ten minutes left, Giovanni Lodetti was fouled on the edge of the Yugoslavia box. Domenghini struck a right-footed free kick that went through the wall and passed Pantelic, who was caught flat-footed. It was 1-1. The game went into extra time. Despite the best efforts of both teams, neither team could score. The final was going into a replay. The replay was played two days later in Rome. Italy recalled Mazzola and Riva. After 12 minutes, Riva struck a low shot that Pantelic saved for a corner. 
the resulting corner went to Domenghini, who took a shot that fell to Riva. Riva then took a shot on the turn to give Italy the lead. Vahidin Musemic then headed wide with a header for Yugoslavia. In the 31st minute, Giancarlo De Sisti passed the ball to Pietro Anastasi. Anastasi then flicks the ball up and volleyed it into the top corner to give Italy a 2-0 lead. Italy dominated the second half. Riva headed the ball wide from close range. Anastasi scored from a rebound, but the goal was disallowed for offside. Riva hit a shot over the bar from close range late in the game. Italy won the replay 2-0 and became European champions for the first time. Dino Zoff would later comment, To be honest, we didn't deserve to draw. But he described Italy's performance in the replay as perfect, and they definitely deserved to win that game. Well, there you have it. That was the story of the 1968 Euro Tournament. My next video will be on the 1972 edition. If you would like to know more, please consider subscribing. I post a new video every two weeks.